Bank shots are not too hard. Actually, when they're away from the cushion near the center of the table, they're fairly easy to uh, understand and uh, find your, your, your spot that you have to hit in order to make them. Now, in this particular case, what you should do is find out where the ball lies. Now, it lies approximately two diamonds from this pocket. Now, all you have to do is bisect the angle, take one half, half the distance. One half of two is one. So that means that if you shoot into this first diamond, now you must shoot through the cushion, you should be able to make this bank very easily. Let's see if we can do it. All right, let's move it up a little bit. We'll move it up to where it's a diamond and a half from the pocket. Now, diamond and a half, one, one half of a diamond and a half is three quarters, isn't it? So the contact point should be right about there. Now we'll move it up to where it's one diamond from the pocket. So that, that means the contact point is one half diamond. Now, what happens when the ball is near the cushion? Now, all of a sudden, you can't figure that angle out because the angle is changed. But what you do is try to figure out what the angle would be from this corner pocket. Now here, if you're shooting from here and you shoot into the second diamond, for instance, that should lead you into the side pocket. See? Now if you, if you, as you move up, you take half the distance. Now in this particular case with that ball here, we know the contact point is the second diamond. So I'm gonna shoot this ball right into the cushion. Let's see what happens. There we go. Now let's move it up to about a diamond and a half from the pocket. So that means you have to parallel it too. Let's put it a diamond and a half. Now that means from here into that angle. From this is one, two, three diamonds from the uh, the pocket. The uh, the cue ball is lying three diamonds from the pocket, but the object ball is a diamond and a half. So that means if we shoot right straight through it we should be able to bank it in that pocket. Now, everything depends on speed. Now here's another one. Get it up a little closer. Right off the first diamond. Now one half of, of uh, two, we'll place the cue ball right here is one. So that's just almost the same thing as what we had before. But now if you bring the cue ball down here below it, now all of a sudden you can't make this, this shot because the angle isn't there. So you gotta, you gotta figure on where this cue ball is lying. This is the key thing. If you're here, you can make the shot. If you're here, you can't make the shot. Kiss shots. There's another shot that comes up quite a bit. We take a shot where two balls are together. They're frozen together. But we'll say you don't have any open shot. There might be one or two balls in, in the way here with the cue ball right about here. Now, this is what we call a kiss shot. A kiss shot is nothing but one ball caroming off another into a pocket. Well, in this case, as we have this thing set up, I can carom this, the 11 ball off to 10 because it's in a direct line with this pocket. Now, you figure you, you lined up your cue stick with the center part of where those two balls come together. This is how you can tell where that, that object ball is going to go. Now this means that if I hit this 11 ball on the left-hand side, I should carry it off the 10 and make it in the pocket. All right, combination. We went into them before, but not, I like to demonstrate three and four ball combinations. Now here's one that's not going to be heading for the pocket. It's going to be heading for the left-hand side of the pocket with a third object ball in the way. Now this combination can be made because the 10 ball in this case is hitting the 15 ball on the left hand side. Now the combination is heading right for here. So in other words, we have to throw it right to make it. Well, you always hit the combination on the opposite side like I, I tried to demonstrate before. Now the 10 ball is hitting it on the opposite side and you should be able to make this combination very easy. See what I mean? Now you take that very same combination on the same angle. And we'll place a ball 
here with a cue ball here, and all of a sudden you can't make this combination for one reason, because you can't hit the second ball, which is the key ball in any combination. You can't hit it on the opposite side. You want to make the 10 ball go right, so that means you have to hit the 15 ball on the left. But here's the cue ball, and the, there's another ball in the way, the 11 ball, except that it's hitting the 15 ball right straight ahead, which mean, uh, means I, I can't possibly make the shot. See what I mean? Practice drills. We always used to try to play long, straight shots because they were always the toughest shots. And I always used to start with a short one first just to try to get myself, my stroke lined up with the, with the pocket. And this is the way we used to play them. We used to hit them hard just so that we could get our cue stick going straight. Now, as we did this, we lengthened the shot, made it a little tougher. All right, let's make it a little longer. Further down. Now for the last one, I always used to place one down near the cushion and then shoot it just to see if I had a stroke. This, this shot here will help your position play. This is where we're all, we're gonna, I'm going to try to pocket all four balls in that, that corner pocket, but I, I'm on such an angle that I have to keep playing position so I get on an angle for every ball in, that's on the table. Let's see if we can do it. That wasn't so hard. This is what we call a, a good position uh, practice shot. This is one where you have to control the cue ball. You have to draw back on most every shot and try to get a line with, on a little angle so you can make all six of those balls. Let's see if we can do it. If you can do that five or six times in a row, that sure would help, help your position play. <laughs>